And now that you are introduced to the course, it is finally time to really start modeling yourself. During this lecture we will outline the principal concepts of standard flux models. All you need for now is a fresh brain, paper and a pencil. The process of modeling encompasses multiple sequential and usually back and forth steps, from first the model development, towards solving the model, applying the model, and finally completing the full model analysis and communicating your results. As mentioned earlier, we for now will focus on model development and outline the basic ingredients. In other words, we will now translate a research question or a system into your first conceptual model. The purpose of this first course is just to learn you how to develop your conceptual model. The ultimate goal for now is therefore to come up with a flow scheme or a diagram which synthesizes the importance and especially the relevant processes of the model, the proper temporal and spatial scale, the model domain and its boundaries, and the model components, as you have the currencies and the units to work with. First, let me introduce the different model components and how to visualize them into a scheme. State variables, for instance biomass or densities of certain species or other ecosystem components, are typically depicted in rectangles. Processes that represent fluxes of, for instance, nutrients or individuals between the state variables, the boxes, are depicted by full arrows. Also, those fluxes in connection with the external world, like import or export of these nutrients or individuals from and to locations in which they are not explicitly modeled. When external forces influence important processes, think of, for instance, light impacting photosynthesis, dashed arrows are used. Derived quantities, for instance, translating certain state variables into an economic value or a variable that can be easily measured, are depicted with circles. And finally, the model domain is represented by an overall box that includes all the components mentioned before. A fully developed conceptual model then looks like this. Here, the lake system is represented by the box, with smaller rectangles representing state variables that encapsulate the modeled nitrogen compartments in the system, from dissolved ammonia in the water column to nitrogen concentrations in the main biological trophic compartments and detritus. Solar radiation mediates ammonia uptake by phytoplankton, and the total level of chlorophyll is derived to link ecosystem state to aerial photograph observations from which chlorophyll can be measured. Finally, all the ecological fluxes between the state variables and transport processes of import and export of ammonia are represented by the arrows. The model currency is defined as millimoles nitrogen per cube meter. The processes are modeled at an annual temporal scale. Now, when the conceptual model is completed, we will further formalize the processes into a mathematical language. We will thus translate the processes into model equations and check for their consistency. This is accomplished by first translating the flow scheme into mass balance equations. Such equations show how the state variables, remember the boxes, quantitatively change as a function of all the flows that enter or leave this variable. We thus need to derive one mass balance equation for each state variable. This is accomplished by first translating the flow scheme into mass balance equations. Such equations show how the state variables, the boxes, quantitatively change as a function of all the flows that enter or leave this variable. We just need to derive one mass balance equation for each state variable. These mass balances are subsequently translated into a mathematical equation and importantly checked for consistency. The latter is likely the most important process as it will show you whether all the relevant processes are eventually translated into the equations. Mass balances are simply derived from the conceptual scheme. For instance, we might have a state variable depicting some concentration of a nutrient. Within this scheme, several fluxes represent influxes of nutrients to the state variable. Here the red flows A, B, C and D, where two green flows represent ways by which nutrients are leaving the state variable. If we put this together, any change in concentration within the relevant time frame, so d con on dt, is simply the sum of all import 
flows. If we put this together, any change in concentration within the relevant time frame, so dcon on dt, is simply the sum of all red import flows minus the two green export flows. So dcon on dt equalizes a plus b plus c plus d minus e minus f. This is a formulation of a differential equation. Or in a more realistic example, carbon content change in zooplankton is the net result of one red import flow by ingestion and three green export flows related to respiration, defecation and predation. Going back to our lake ecosystem model, we have then six state variables and hence six mass balance equations. Without going into detail on the exact nature of the underlying ecological and transport processes we have, any change in phytoplankton associated nitrogen being the net result of incoming flow 1 minus outgoing flow 2, 8 and 9. Nitrogen balances in zooplankton result from import 2 minus export 3, 4 and 5. Those in fish result from import 5 minus 6 minus 12. Nitrogen in free-floating detritus from influxes 3 plus 8 plus 6 plus 12 minus the export flow 7 and export flow 10. Nitrogen in detritus that sink to the bottom results from imports 7 and 9 minus export 11. And finally, dissolved ammonia is additionally impacted by transport into the lake, this is the import flux 13, and export from the lake by flow number 14. Now, once finished, we need to check whether the model makes sense. We therefore follow the law of mass conservation, which states that in a fully closed system, the sum of all the rates should be zero. So for this example, where no external import or export is modeled, you will notice that all fluxes eventually level out. So the sum of all is zero. However, in systems where these external flows are present, like in our ecosystem example, we expect the sum of all the rate changes to equalize the sum of the external sinks and sources. Or alternatively, the mass budget of all the rate changes and these sinks and sources should be zero. So back to our worked out ecosystem model, you will notice that the sum of all the mass balances eventually equalize the external input and output flows. So 13 minus 14. This means that our model is consistent and ready to be further developed. Now it is up to you. During this course you will practice and develop four conceptual models. We provide a full explanation of the cases in the accompanying notes, but essentially you will develop a conceptual model for carbon dynamics in a Canadian river, develop a model to understand and optimize biomanipulation of lakes, to understand predator prey dynamics in the Serengeti and to understand and manage competition between an invading Japanese oyster and its native sister species in the marine part of the Scout estuary. We just expect you to develop both the flow charts and the mass balance equations and to carefully follow all the needed steps. First, define the model domain and the boundaries. Think about the model currency and the units. Identify the state variables and all the flux processes before eventually deriving the mass balance actions and checking their consistency. Good luck! And remember, the aim of the class is to practice. This includes some mental suffering, but equally seeking feedback from your peers and from us, of course. But first, try yourself.